All right, welcome to uh, cylindrical shells. Uh, before we talked about washers and discs and we use cross sections to, to take volumes of these solids. And what happens with cylindrical shells is that we're just going to take the volume of one complete revolution. And so uh, the definition here is the volume V of this solid is obtained by rotating the region under the graph of Y equals F of X over the interval A to B about the Y axis this would be equal to, the volume is equal to 2 pi times the integration from a to b of x times f of x dx. So in other words, 2 pi times the integration from a to b of the radius x times the height of the shell. Okay, so we're going to look at an example of this. So what happens in example one and with cylindrical shells that we're really going to be rotating around the y-axis and actually integrating with respect to x. So it gets really tough to use the disk method in this type of example because then we would have to take this equation here, f of x, and find the inverse, which of a third degree can be very difficult. So this is one of the reasons why we use uh, the cylindrical shell in some cases. So in number one, we're going to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region under the graph of f of x equals 1 minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 2x cubed over the interval from 0 to 1 about the y-axis. So we're rotating vertically, yet we're going to differentiate with respect to x. So here's the function here, f of x in red. Okay, and so what happens is you can see here in red it rotates around and then we have this nice cylindrical shell here in green that we're going to be taking the volume of. Okay, so let's look at how to set up that integral. Now we only have one function, f of x, so the volume is equal to 2 pi, our interval is from 0 to 1 and we're going to multiply x times f of x dx. So instead of writing f of x, let's substitute what we know, and we have that here. It's the only step we did. We substitute, and then you have to multiply x times each one of these terms, which is what we did here. Okay, 2 pi comes along for the ride. The interval stays the same. Once you multiply x through, you have to integrate each term. And so we've done that here. And the last term is negative, or minus 2 fifths x to the fifth. It got a little erased. So we have 2 pi times this whole quantity, and we have to evaluate from 0 to 1. We can plug 1 in, and basically you're adding 1 half, minus 2 thirds, plus 3 fourths, minus 2 fifths. If you combine all those, you get 11 pi over 30, because all this, this number has to be multiplied by 2 pi. And remember, we don't have to put 0 in, because each of these terms has an x, so we're going to subtract off 0. So just plug 1 in for x. Find out what that fraction is and multiply it by 2 pi. Okay, so we can change uh, equations variously, and what it means really is we're going to add here, we're going to have two functions now. We're going to rotate the region between the graphs f of x and g of x now, where f of x is going to be greater than or equal to g of x on this certain interval around the y-axis. So we're going to rotate two functions around the y-axis where f of x is larger than g of x. So what that looks like here graphically is here's your f of x function, it's larger over an interval, the y values are larger. Then here's g of x on the bottom here. And so the height, okay, the height of the shell is really f of x minus g of x. Whatever this value is minus this value gives you that height. So that's important to realize. So if we have two functions and f of x is greater than g of x on this interval and we're rotating around the y-axis, you have this volume formula to use. The volume is equal to 2 pi and we're going times the integration from a to b of x times the difference of the two functions and we're integrating with respect to x. Okay? So graphically, three-dimensionally, we try to draw it here. Here's our f of x on top our g of x here, and we're rotating both those pieces around the y-axis so we get this red cylinder here inside that we're going to find the volume of. Okay, and we're going to use that integration. Now let's look at a problem that has that in there. So we're going to calculate the volume of the solid. We're rotating the area enclosed by f of x 
equals 9 minus x squared, and g of x equals 9 minus 3x, about the y-axis. So I've drawn the two functions in black. I have 9 uh, minus x squared, and we have 9 minus 3x here. You can see graphically they intersect at 0 and 3. Okay. So the other way you can find the limit of integration is set them equal to one another and really solve for x. So we do that, bring every term to one side, and you get x squared minus 3x. And you have 0 equals x times x minus 3 and 0 comma 3, and that's our limit of integration. So now we have to integrate. We set up our integral from 2 pi times the integration from 0 to 3 of x times the difference of our two functions. Okay. In this case, 9 minus x squared is the larger function, and so that's f of x minus g of x. And so we have to subtract off this second polynomial. So really, minus 9 plus 9, that cancels, and we're going to be left with minus x squared plus 3x, and that's going to be timed x here. So there's our simplified uh, integration. So now you distribute the x through, and we do that here in red. And we're going to integrate from 2 pi, and we integrate x, 3x squared, which is just x cubed. x cubed is minus 1 fourth x to the fourth, and we're going from 0 to 3. So you plug 3 in for each x, you get a number, and you multiply that by 2 pi, and we get 27 pi over 2. We do not plug 0 in for x because then we'd just be subtracting off 0. So that is the first part of our video on cylindrical shells. Stay tuned for uh, video two. If you have any questions on these examples, please uh, go below on the YouTube channel and type in your questions or you can email me. Thanks, guys. We'll see you for video two.